I said I was going to end or start this video uh, with what where we ended on Monday. So pull out your 7.1 packet. I'm sorry if the video was wonky. I'm so disappointed. I bought this fancy schmancy camera, um, document camera that was going to be able to do amazing things and like the most basic thing. It was like wonked right so I'm back to my old one so hopefully this one here we turn the lamp on hopefully this one will right geez that's not that's a good sign so this one will um, last us the next few weeks um, so I also organized blackboard a little bit better since we're gonna be using it so much for the next four weeks so um, these handouts are on blackboard under note packets Okay, uh, so if you don't have a printer, that's not a big deal. You can just write this stuff down. It might take you a little longer to go through the videos, but it's not the end of the world, right? Uh, so these can be found on the Blackboard. You'll see Lecture Video tab now. You'll see Oh No Wow and Review tab, and you'll see a Note Packet tab. So this will be found under the Note Packet tab, okay? All right, so let's look at the back of 7.1. And uh, this is a bunch of data that um, we've looked at some of this about milk consumption versus um, soft drink consumption over uh, the past several decades. And so it looks like since the 1970s, milk, the gallons that people are consuming, um, is decreasing as the years go by and what's happening to the soft drink. So it uh, looks like a lot of pe more people are eating, drinking, they're drinking more soda, right, as time's go going by. So uh, the two models for this data are given, all right? Um, and these were like based off of a scattered plot. So if you um, plotted these and drew the best fit line, th this is the best fit line. Same with these. So if you plotted these points and drew the best fit line, this is what the best fit line would end up looking like. All right, so my pen was leaking. Check that out. It's nastiness all over me now. All right, here we go. So it says, what is the slope of model M? All right, so M, let me write it down. M is negative 0.28T plus 36.67. And so we know the slope is that number hanging out with the t, where t is time in years since 1970. So there's our slope, okay? So our slope equals negative 0.28 over 1, right? Really over 1. Now remember, it's input, or when we talk about the slope, it's the change in the vertical, which is the y values, or the output. And then this is always, if time is uh, a, an option, it's always the change in the output, which is time. So the bottom is always time. So in this case, remember, we want it over 1 so it can be per something. So this is per year. So what are the units on the input? Well, for, this is milk consumption and it's in gallons per person for that year. So it's going down by 0.28 gallons per person. So the consumption of milk is decreasing because the slope's negative. By point to a gallons per person per year since 1970. Okay? So now let's repeat that with the soft drink, which is right here. So S of T, I should put it in S of T, is 0.82T plus 8.96. Remember, the number hanging out in front of that T value is your slope. So I'm going to put my slope over 1 because we want it to be a unit fraction. 
And remember, time is um, an option. That's the input. And remember, this is the change in the y's, which is the output, over the change in the x, which is the input. In this case, x is equal to t. So the consumption of soft drinks is changing, right? Because that's not equal to zero. And since it's positive, we know it's changing in an increasing direction. So the, the consumption of soft drinks is increasing by 0.82, so just about a gallon, but 82 gallons per person. Do you see that? Gallons per person, and this is per year since 1970 up until you know 2005 I should say between 1970 and 2005 because um, we don't have the data after that okay so it says find the equation of the sum function so this means we're going to combine the milk and the soft drink consumption for these given years. So we're going to combine the milk. So here's the milk equation. And we're going to add that to the soft drink equation. So in any given year, I can tell you how much people drink total in milk and soft drink. Okay. So here we go, you ready? So then combine like terms. Okay, so you have a negative 0.28 plus that positive 0.82. So that's the number in front of your T. And 36.67 plus 8.96 plus 45, uh, 63. So this is what M plus S equals in terms of time. So when they want to know what is M plus S of 53, that means T is 53. So wherever I see a T, I'm going to pop a 53. And then we'll pull out our calculator. So if T is 53, that means it's 53 years since 1970. So we'll have to keep that in the back of our minds. Okay, so I'm just put, putting that into my calculator. It looks like we got 74.25. So now what does it mean? Well, if it's 1970 and we're going 53 years beyond that, it looks like we're looking at the year 2023. Does that make sense? We're, so we're definitely extrapolating, right? We're extrapolating. We're going beyond the bounds of our data. So, um, oh, I'm sorry. I just, I just lied. Hold on. Look, it's 1950. Sorry about that. Do you see that? Um, where T is the number of years since 1950. I think I saw 1970 there and went crazy. Nope. I'm sorry. 1950. So let's rethink that. All right. So 1950 plus 53. Okay. There we go. 2003. That makes a little, I didn't think they would extrapolate that far. 2003. We're going unedited. All right. So uh, in the year. 2003, which is 53 years beyond 1950, the total consumption of milk and soda combined is 74.25 gallons per person. 
So in that year, that's how much milk and soda each person is drinking on average. Okay, so I just wanted to get that in. Uh, there are other questions that could be asked of you. Um, let me just throw another one in there just for kicks. Uh, they could also ask maybe when does milk and soda, when does the milk and soda consumption equal each other? You know, that's something that could have been asked and if they wanted to know when they were equal to each other then you would set those two values equal and then you would have solved for T. So there's other things that they could ask you about that on my math lab and if, if they're asked, you know, let me know if you're a little confused to ask a question, shoot me a, um, a message through Remind and we can see each other face to face. All right. So hopefully you have downloaded, um, printed off 7-2, or if you don't have a printer, right, just pull out some notebook paper. We're going to take some notes today. All right, so just a quick review. We talked about monomials um, on Monday, and uh, a monomial is a one-term polynomial. Uh, an example of a mon monomial would be maybe 5x squared or uh, 3xy cubed. So you remember monomial is just one term and of course if it's a polynomial all the powers to your variables have to be nice counting numbers. There's no decimals, no fractions, no negative numbers. So that's the big thing um, for the exponents only. The coefficients can have negatives, right? But the exponents can't. Binomial means two. So like 3x minus 2 is a binomial, right? You have these nice uh, exponents, like that would have an exponent of 1, right? And we have two terms. A trinomial has three terms, so something like this. I'm going to put a half there because you're allowed to have um, the coefficients to be fractions. You just can't have the powers to be practical to be fractions. And remember, it's, it's just tradition to write the highest power first to that variable, and then you go in descending order. All right? so that's a trinomial because there's three terms, right? Three terms. All right, so this section is on multiplying polynomials. And in order to multiply polynomials, we need a very short little rule and that is when we're multiplying like bases, but we have these powers. So for example, if I have uh, x cubed times x to the sixth. So if you have like bases and you're multiplying, you keep the base and you add the exponents. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. It says in words. When multiplying like bases, keep the base and add the exponents. Okay, so let's practice some of these. All right, now I'm hoping you see that this is not the distributive property, that everything's being multiplied. So this could technically be written like this without the parentheses, because distributive is only when there's a addition or a subtraction to connect those two terms. So this is just a monomial times a monomial. And if you need to, I mean, some textbooks will talk about using the commutative property to switch terms so you have your constants together with your variables. If you want to do that, you can. So then we'll have 14. Here we have like bases. There's a 1 understood to be there. So you multiply um, the coefficients. And then what you're going to do is you're going to keep the base and add the exponents. Okay? So this again can be rewritten without the parentheses. So I'm going to multiply these constant terms that are in the front. 
so that'll be negative 15. And then x to the fourth times x squared. If you have, if you're multiplying like bases, you keep the base and you add the exponents. Now I'm going to take my time and, and write this out. Okay, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and use this commutative property and associative property to swap things around. So I'm going to put my my constants together. I'm going to put my x's together, and I'm going to put my y's together. Okay? So this will be negative 8. When you multiply like bases, you keep the base and you add the exponents. Remember, there's a 1 understood there. When you're multiplying like bases, you keep the base and you add the exponents. Okay? All right, so that's a monomial times a monomial. And the parentheses were just to separate the two monomials. Now this next one is when you're actually going to use the distributive property, right? So we're going to take this monomial. Do you see there's an addition or a subtraction in, in the middle? So that's separating terms. So to get rid of the parentheses, we're going to distribute through that 4x to each term inside that set of parentheses. Now again, you don't have to write this step down, but I usually do. So multiplying the coefficients there, negative 4 times 6 is going to give us negative 24, and then x times x will be x squared. And then you can write this one either one of two ways. You could say plus a negative 12x, or you could just say minus 12x, right? These are the same thing because negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, but a plus and minus is just a minus. So however you want to write it, that's up to you. All right, let's try one more. So I'm going to take that negative 4t and pa pass it off to everyone. So I'm going to put a negative 4t in front of the 8t squared plus, and then I'm going to put a negative 4t in front of that 3t. So go ahead and try it, you know, see how you do. Try it. This is where I wish we were together because I'd have you guys help me out. Um, negative 4 times 8 is negative 32. And that will be t cubed, right? Like bases, keep the base and add the powers. And then minus 12 t squared. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. You guys doing okay? I wish we were together. No, I miss seeing everyone. All right, try this one. Give it a shot. It's a little bit longer, but not any harder. Just go ahead, turn off the video, take your time, distribute this through, and then we'll see how you did. Okay, but you know, take. Some people have been saying they're actually turning off the video, and you should be. I want you to try it. Okay, I do. I want you to try it. All right, so I'm going to go for it. And again, you don't have to take this step. But I like putting that negative 7w squared y in front of each term. Okay, minus a negative 7w squared y times 8y squared. Do you see? Like it's plus a negative right here, and then it's going to be minus, and then the negative's going to go in the front, so that's eventually going to be a positive. If you plot your calculator, you'll see that. So did you guys get negative 42? And then w squared times w squared is w to the fourth. Why? And then plus and minus, I'm just going to put minus. 14. Looks like we'll have a w cubed y squared. Right, remember there's a 1 understood there? Okay, minus minus is a plus. 56 w squared y cubed. How'd you do? Do you guys do okay? Does that make sense? All right, that's a monomial 
times the polynomial. Now you guys may have learned the product of two binomials in different ways. So I'm going to do them both ways, depending how you're comfy cozy with it. And if you haven't done it in so long, you just don't remember it, then pick one of these methods and love on it. I, pr I like the box method. That's my favorite method. Um, maybe some of you learned FOIL. So I'm going to, if you hear people say FOIL, I'm going to tell you what the F-O-I-L stands for. So the F stands for the first two terms in the binomial. So in this case, X and X would be my first two terms. O stands for outer. And the outer two terms would be the X and the negative 4. I stands for inner. And the inner two terms would be the positive 3 and the positive X. And then L stands for last and that would be the positive 3 and the negative 4. So when people talk about FOIL, you multiply in this order, so if, uh, the, these terms. So if I say let's multiply the two first terms, you would say x times x is x squared. Plus, let's multiply the outer terms. So x times negative 4 would be negative 4x. And then we're going to do the inner terms. So plus, the inner terms would be positive 3 times x. You see these are the two inners. And then last would be positive 3 times negative 4. So I'm just going to write minus 12. And then you combine like terms. So negative 4x plus 3x, if you put that in on your calculator, you would just get negative x or negative 1x. If you want to put a 1 there, that's fine too. That's called the FOIA method. I like using the box method. So in the box method, you just write, you write down the terms. So it, here's my first binomial, x plus 3, because remember the sign and the number can't be separated, and then x minus 4. And then you can go in any order. So x times x is x squared. x times a positive 3x is 3x. x times negative 4, I'm going to put it in this box. See, you want to put it in where the row or the column and the row intersect. So the negative 4x would be here. And this box would intersect with positive 3 and negative 4. And you take those products, and that would be negative 12. And then you see you have your three pieces. But I like how the diagonals line up. So we're going to have x squared, 3x minus 4x is negative x minus 12. Do you see it? All right. So let's try FOIL. If you want to do FOIL, we'll do FOIL, and then we'll, we'll do the box method. All right. So let's try FOIL. So first would be x squared x times x is x squared. Outer would be these two terms. <clears throat> Inner would be these two terms. And then the last would be the negative 8 plus 8. So if you multiply, remember we're multiplying. If you multiply those together, that gives you negative 64. Now what's interesting about this is that, do you see the, these two middle terms cancel? You have positive 8 and negative 8, so th that's equal to 0, and so you'll get x squared minus 64. If you like the box method, like I do, you'll have x minus 8 and x plus 8. And then you can go in any order you want. So I usually just go from left to right. So x times x will be x squared. Negative 8 times x will give you negative 8x. x times positive 8 is a positive 8x. You don't have to put the plus sign if you don't want to, right? And then negative 8 times positive 8 is negative 64. So you see you have your four terms. x squared is first, and then when you add on the diagonals, you can see those would be 0, and then minus 64. All right, so you guys try it. There's a whole bunch of them here. Pause the video and at least do these three and then we'll do this one together, okay? So pause the video, 
and try these three. And then we'll do this one together. All right. I'm going to do it with the box method. If you love foiling, go for it. Just make sure you're getting the same thing that I'm getting. Okay? So I just think the box method really keeps you organized. So I'm going to set up my box. Right? There's x minus 4 and x squared minus 3. And then x times x squared is x cubed, right? If you have like bases, you keep the base and you add the powers. Negative 4 times x squared will be negative 4x squared. x times 3, negative 3 is negative 3x. And then negative 4 times negative 3 is 12. Now, you can't combine any of these, right? That's an x squared and that's an x. So I'm just going to write all these terms. I'm going to write them in standard form. So the largest exponent goes first, and then it goes in descending order. Right? And that's nice. I like the box method. I think it's handy. I just think it, it, it keeps you organized. Um, it's easy to follow your work. And it's not hard to make it. Alright, so this one would be 5x times 3x. So that's 15x squared. This will be negative 18wx. And it doesn't matter. You could write negative 18wx or you could write negative 18xw. It doesn't matter. Okay, down here we'll have 10 and since I wrote it wx first here, I'm going to write wx here first. It doesn't matter. You could have written them as x times w. It, so it doesn't matter what order you write that in. And then this one would have been negative 12w squared. So now we add the pieces. So I have 15x squared. Do you see that these guys are like terms? So negative 18 plus 10. It's negative 8, and then minus 12w squared. You could have also written it this way. If you wanted the xw, that would have been great. I, do, I personally don't care which way you write it, okay? All right, let's try the next one. Just give me a little pause, make sure you're getting it. So, I like the box method. If you want to foil it, go for it. The only thing about foiling is that once you get down here, you really can't foil. And I don't know why that line's here. I, I couldn't get rid of it. Uh, it doesn't show up on my, my non-PDF, so I'll just ignore that line. All right, so the box, I'm going to use the box method eventually because we can't foil. Foils only if you have a binomial times a binomial. So I just stick to the box method. It works every time. And it's not hard to set up. So we got 3x minus 5x, 4x plus y. All right, I go from left to right, but you can go any direction you want. You can go up or down. You can go right to left. You're going to get the same answer no matter what. So this will give you 12x squared. Okay, this will give you negative 20. I'll put the x first this time. It doesn't matter negative 20 xy okay so I'm going to be consistent so this will be 3 x times y and this will be minus 5 y times y is y squared it's negative 5 times a positive 1 y if you need to put the number there All right and let's add so we've got 12 x squared do you see that these are like terms so that'll be minus 17xy and then minus 5y squared. All right, I hope you guys are getting this. If not, give me a shout. Um, so for this one, you can, whatever you want to do, you can, you can do the binomials first and then distribute through. It's completely up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and distribute this guy to the first binomial, right? It's this times this times this. Um, and then I'll make my boxes, okay? 
It's up to you, though, what you want to do. I'm going to push through that 5x, and you just push it through the first set of parentheses. That 5x isn't over here. So this will be 5x times x squared is 5x cubed, and then 5x times 3 is going to be positive 15x. Does everyone see what I did? Here, I'm just going to do it up here in case you want me to write it out. So it would be 5x times x squared plus 5x times 3. So there's your 5x squared times, or 5x times x squared. Remember, there's a 1 there. So there's where we got the 3, and this will be 15 times x. And so now I can set up my box. Do you see? I just have a binomial times a binomial. So I'm just going to go set up my box. Call this the box method. So we've got 5x cubed and then 15x and then, oh, I like to keep the plus, and then x minus 4. Do you see I just wrote these binomials? They each had a little seat on my 2 by 2 box and then you just multiply. So 5x cubed times x, this is where this column and this row intersect. Okay, then 15x times x would be 15x squared. 5x cubed times negative 4 is negative 20x cubed. And then 15 times negative 4 is negative 60x. How do we do? Did you guys do okay? Give me a little pause to make sure that all makes sense. And then there's really no like terms here. Do you see it? So I'm just going to go um, write it in order of exponents from largest to smallest because that's what's considered standard form. So it would be go the 4, then the 3, then the x squared term, and then the x term. So the next section is the same part. They're going to multiply two polynomials. Um, so you just set it up with the box method. I like the box method, so that's what I'm going to show you. So this was a 2 by 3, so you could orient it this way or up and down. It doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and write out those terms along the top of the box. Oop, I just copied that wrong though. 5x squared. There's my minus 3xy and there's my plus 4y squared. And then we've got 2x plus y. 5x squared minus 3xy plus 4y squared and then 2x plus y. And then you just multiply and then we'll combine like terms. So 5x squared times 2x, right? This is where these guys intersect. So that'll be 10x cubed. Negative 3xy times 2x. Well, the negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. The x times x gives you x squared. And then the y just hangs out. Okay. And then this will be 8. And I'm just going to decide. I'm going to write the x first. If there's an x and a y in it, I'm just going to write the x first. So we have 8 x y squared. I'm going to come down here. Remember if there's an x, I'm just going to write it first. Just make a decision and stick with it. So we've got 5 x squared times y. Positive y. Here we're going to have negative 3 x and then y times a positive y is y squared. And this will be positive 4 y cubed. And then we're going to combine like terms. So I only have 1 with x cubed. Now do you see that this guy and this guy are like terms? So I have negative 6 and then a positive y, or a positive 5. So that's going to give me negative 1 of these x squared y's. <clears throat> you don't have to write the 1 there if you don't want to. Do you see that this 
and this are like terms. So we have 8 take away 3, so that would be positive 5xy squared. And then we have a positive 4y cubed left. I like the, the box method. I just think it's really easy. <clears throat> so that's my recommended uh, choice. Instead of using the distributive property, it gets real messy. So here, why don't you guys try it? <clears throat> Take a pause. Right, turn off the video and try it. And see how you do, okay? I made the box for you. Um, it, you can either write it this way or up and down with a three by, three running this way and then two. I, I just like the, the look of the length. So fill in the missing pieces and then multiply. And then turn the video back on. Okay, so hopefully you wrote the trinomial across the top and you wrote the binomial down the side. And then it, however order you want, I usually go from left to right, <clears throat> this will be 10x cubed and then minus 35x squared and then minus 20x, and then I'm going to come over here. This will give me 6x squared minus 21x, and then minus 12. And I'm going to add on the diagonals. So I'm going to have 10x cubed, 30, you've got negative 35 plus 6, so that's going to give you negative 29x squared. Here you have negative 20 plus negative 21, that's going to be negative 41x and then minus 12. How'd you guys do, okay? Isn't the box nice? I like the box. And you can use the box if it's a 3x3. Three three. And this is a pain to do if you like to distribute. I mean, if you like to distribute, go for it but I'm going to make my box. So it's just going to be a 3x3 three three box. And it's going to keep us very organized rather than messing with the distributive. So I have three terms and three terms. So I need a 3x3 three three box. This is about as hard as it gets. So it's not too bad as long as you're organized. So we'll have 3x squared plus 6x minus 3 and then we'll have 4x squared minus 6x plus 5. So why don't you pause it and try it. You take a pause and give it a try and see how you do, okay? Alright, I'm going to try it. So I'm going to get 12x to the fourth. And you're multiplying like bases. You keep the base and you add the powers. 24x cubed and minus 12x squared. Let's come down here. We'll have negative 18x cubed minus 36x squared and then plus 18x. Be careful. A negative times a negative is a positive. All right, do you see how I'm doing that? So 3 times negative 6 is negative 18 x cubed. x squared times x. Negative 6 times 6 is negative 36. x times x is x squared. And then we just did that one. Okay, so let's see. 3x squared times 5 is 15x squared. And then we'll have 30x and then minus 15. And like, check out the diagonals. It's so nice that oftentimes they're all lined up for us. And so just pull out your calculator, right? You don't have to do this stuff in your head. All right, you ready? So the only term with the fourth in it is x to the 12x to the fourth. So now we have negative 18x cubes plus a positive 24 of them. You guys see what I'm typing in? 
Okay, so that's going to be plus 6x cubed. Now look at this. You see this is x squared, that's x squared, that's x squared. So let's combine them. So we have 15. Oh, I've had a, I think you guys can see that. 15 minus 36 minus 12. So minus 33x squared. And then 30 and 18 is 48x minus 15. Okay, that is as hard as they're going to get. They're not going to get any harder than that. That is a very long poly polynomial times polynomial. A trinomial times a trinomial. There's a lot of terms. But if you just use the box method, I don't think you'll get lost in it. I think it keeps you pretty well organized. Okay? So the last little bit to this section is making new functions. Instead of adding and subtracting them, we're just going to be taking the product of them. So if they ask you to times, find f times g, they want you to do 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 5. That's all. So that's not too bad, right? So let's make our 2 by 2. So we have 2x minus 1 and 3x plus 5. So you'll have 6x squared minus 3x, okay, then 10x minus 5. So let's combine our like terms. So you'll have 6x squared plus 7x minus 5. And that's going to be what f times g equals. So down here, they want you to take this new function, f times g, I'm going to call it of x, and then wherever we see an x, we're going to pop in a 2, right? Because it's usually f times g of x, now x is 2. So instead of x squared, we're going to have a 2 squared. Instead of 7 times x, we're going to have 7 times 2, and we'll subtract 5. So, you know what? Just pull out your calculator. Let's do it on our calculator. You have 6 times 2 squared plus 7 times 2 minus 5. Just do it on your calculator. You don't have to do it in your head. There we go. So that's not too terrible, right? Let's try one more. So they're asking us to make a new function. They want us to take the function r and multiply it by the function h. So I like my box method. If you like FOIL, feel free to FOIL away. I'm going to make my box and then it's two by it's a binomial times a binomial, so I just needed a two by two box. So go ahead and take your time, multiply those out, and then we'll combine our like terms. So we have twenty one x squared three times seven and then minus seven x negative one times seven x. Down here we'll have negative 12x because 3 times negative 4 times x. And then negative 1 times 4 is 4. And then we can combine like terms. So 21x squared. Negative 12 minus 7. Do that on your calculator if you need to. That's negative 19x plus 4. So there's my new function. So r times h, and it's in terms of x's, is equal to 21x squared minus 19x plus 4. And so now, what are they asking you to pop in for x? Do you see they're asking you to evaluate this at negative 1? Does that make sense? So r times h of negative 1 
wherever I see an x, I'm going to pop it in negative 1. And then I'm going to pull out my calculator, okay? So let's do this on my calculator. So 21, parenthesis, negative 1, parenthesis squared, minus 19, parenthesis negative 1, plus 4. There you go. I got 44. Did you guys get 44? I hope so. Okay. So I will, um, so that's it. That's it for this section. It's not too terrible. Um, the notes will now be in the note packet option for Blackboard. If you did not take the next test, about half the class did. If you are one of the people that did not, I think what we'll actually do is um, open up time slots on Wednesday um, after spring break. So I'll have three different time slots. You can tell me what time slot you want. We're going to have to get on Zoom at some point over spring break. Everyone's going to have to reach out and get in touch with me on Zoom, either on their computer or on their phone, because while you're taking the test, you're going to have to be on Zoom so that if you have any questions or any technical difficulties um, posting it, we need to take care of it together. So I'll remind you that on Friday and send some emails out. But I believe Wednesday is going to be our big test day, and that will be the Wednesday after spring break. And that's only for those people that didn't take it yet, okay? So if you took it, you're home free. If you didn't take it, then mark your calendars. Yeah, I'll tell you what that day is right now. So, uh, it will be, if I can find my calendar. Uh, oh, I can't find the calendar on my phone. Uh, it looks like, oh, for goodness sakes, I can, the calendar option that I'm getting off of Google is weird. Um, it looks like it will be um, the 14th. No, that's Tuesday, the 15th. So, April 15th, and I'll send you a message, but just giving me a little heads up right now. That's when, if you did not take the test, that's when you're going to take it. And I'll give you a bunch of time options during the day and evening. So, if you work, don't panic. We'll get you a time slot, and then uh, you'll have the hour and uh, an hour and a half uh, where we're together, and then I'm going to post it to your account and then um, you'll open it and take it and then you're going to repost it to Blackboard. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay? So have a good one. I'm going to, I would like to look at this time. So this is 12.01 in the morning now on Tuesday. This is when I make these so late at night when my house is quiet. Um, so I hope you guys are having a, a good day and we will talk again on Friday. But just remember you can always see me face-to-face -face on Remind. Uh, send me a message through Remind, and then we can get on the Zoom room. All right, take care, everyone. Uh, looking forward to hopefully seeing you sometime soon.